So my topic today is about the characteristics and source of volatile organic compounds, they call VOCs, works, and their impact on ozone pollution in China. So uh, let, just, let me just give you a, a little bit background about you know, how does land supply influence air quality? So on the earth, actually, you know, there are many uh, human activities. So we build cities, right, uh, on the earth. And on the other hand, of course, we do not use uh, some lens so that, you know, vegetation will glow up in this uh, area. And so uh, because human activities, we build cities. So therefore, we generate a lot of anthropogenic uh, VOC, uh, air pollutants, including VOC. Okay, so uh, for example, vehicles. So we create vehicles and then vehicles uh, combust fossil fuel. So which actually emit a lot of uh, air pollutants to the air. And also because we build cities. So in the city, so for example, in Hong Kong, we have you know a lot of air conditioning systems, which actually uh, will cause heat island effect, so and then cause the air circulation uh, around the city, right? So therefore, it will affect the air quality, uh, even you know, next to the city or in the region uh, scale, and even for the you know we don't build any you know uh, buildings or human activities, we still have vegetation which we think is good, right? However, some vegetation plants can emit, you know, volatile organic compounds to the air. We call it natural emissions. And these compounds then will go through chemical reactions to generate ozone. So we know ozone will affect human health. Okay, and also, you know, the, uh, because we have the uh, surface, you know, urban building uh, surface and vegetation. So therefore some air pollutants can deposit on this, uh, you know, on these uh, uh, materials. Okay, so uh, let's come back, you know, to the air quality. So why we think, you know, the uh, focus on the VOCs and then ozone pollution. So actually uh, in these years, for, for example, from almost 10 years ago up to you know, 2019, so we see the surface ozone increased over China. So I believe you know, many people know this factor. And uh, so we see in the whole country, we see the increase of ozone at a rate of 1.9 ppb per year, okay, per year. Well, in North China, the increase rate is the highest, okay, 3.3 PVB per year. So that's a lot, okay, think about it. every year we have 3.3, you know, uh, PVB of ozone increase. And then Yang's River data is the China. So the increase rate a little bit lower, but still 1.6 PVB per year. And PRD, so where Hong Kong is located, so we found actually the, uh, the it still increase the ozone uh, level, but the increase rate, increasing rate is a little bit lower than other region. So this actually uh, very interesting. We see, you know, the primary air pollutants such as SO2, NOx, CO, PM 2.5, PM 10. So these, you know, these air pollutants are mainly emitted from primary source directly, they all showed increase, a decreasing trend, right? So that's in contrast to ozone level. So the, this actually, uh, because ozone is a secondary air pollutant, usually we don't think any source will directly emit ozone to the atmosphere, right? The ozone is formed through chemical reaction of primary air pollutants. So therefore, in different city, they have different land use or land use functions, and then which will emit different uh, 
species or different levels of climate air pollutants to the atmosphere, and then the ozone will be generated. So later I will show you more uh, slides. Okay, so, so to understand you know, the land use, the impact of land use on the air pollution in different cities. Okay, so we actually, we conducted uh, intensive air, uh, air pollutant field measurements in 10 typical cities in China. So from you know, south to north, from east to west. So you see you know, Beijing, Shijiazhuang, Jinan, Lanzhou, Zhengzhou, Wuhan, Shanghai, Chengdu, Guiyang, and Guangzhou. So these are the 10 typical cities we choose. And then we conduct intensive sampling campaign between June to August, 2018. Okay, so uh, we collected a lot of uh, you know, samples. We collected more than 700 VOC and OVOC samples. VOC, we collected use canister, okay? And then bring the canister back to our laboratory for chemical analysis. And OVOC, we use cartridge to collect it and also bring back to our laboratory for chemical analysis. So in addition, we actually, we focus on five major cities to measure more chemicals such as uh, SO2, CO, uh, NO, uh, NOx, uh, ozone, and also the weather conditions right, using the online uh, instrument. Okay, so we can see the five, 10 major cities in red color. So Beijing, Lanzhou, Chengdu, Wuhan, and Shanghai. And in addition, we also focus on the PRD region. So where Hong Kong is located, right? So uh, we also conducted intensive sampling campaign. At the same time, uh, in PRD region, we also collected, you know, uh, 180 VOC and OVOC samples, respectively. And uh, as I said, you know, this is a canister. We often use to collect air, suck the air into the canister and then bring back to the laboratory using the GC, MSD, FID, ECD system to analyze, you know, uh, carbon three to 10 hydrocarbons. Okay, and also, you know, for uh, ECD, we can analyze the hydrocarbons and the alkyl nitrates. And for the OVOC, we use the DMPH cartridge to collect the sample and then bring back, use the HPLC to analyze those uh, species. And here actually I show some uh, chromatograms uh, of MSD, FID, and ECD. So each peak represents one VOC species. Okay, so as you can see, our system can separate the VOC. So these are the VOC and this one is uh, for OVOC. Uh, so they can separate, can be separate well in the system. And we identify those uh, peaks uh, using the retention type. So if you use the, this kind of instrument and also use the mass spectrum. However, because this is the uh, uh, intensive sampling campaign. So the data set, the quality of the data set is very important. Whenever you conduct the field measurement, bring the sample back to your laboratory for chemical analysis, you have to make sure the data is reliable. So uh, during our uh, uh, chemical analysis, we actually we, we encounter some problems. So for example, here it shows the chromatogram of standard. We inject standard into the system. We found no, almost no peaks for aromatic hydrocarbon. Okay, here. So based on retention time. And then actually uh, when we Aid a little bit of water vapor through the system into the uh, standard, and then actually we can get improved chromatogram with much larger aromatic peaks in this way. So we can quantify, identify, and quantify the uh, the aromatic hydrocarbons. So uh, for our system, so we can analyze, you know, 
more than 100 species. So including 80, about 90, you know, hydrocarbon and 16 OVOCs. So uh, currently we actually, we are uh, uh, trying to extend our analytical capacity on OVOCs, you know, try to analyze more, more than 16 OVOCs. So as you can see for hydrocarbons, our system can analyze alkanes, 27 alkanes, 19 alkene, alkynes, and hydrocarbon, 21 alkene nitrate, so eight alkene nitrates. So quality control is very important as I mentioned, you know. Uh, so we, we, we did the calibration all the time, you know, uh, before, during, and after you know, to ensure the system uh, was running uh, correctly, properly. So, uh, so as you can see for the standard curve, at least we should have four points to get the standard curve, by the way. So you can see we got a quite good uh, linear regulation. So the R square is, uh, was higher than 0.99, okay. And also the accuracy, position, method detection limit, uh, we're all calculated based on the, you know, US EPA TO15 method. And then uh, we can see these parameters actually will we see in acceptable range. So this is very, very important to, uh, to ensure the QAQC. In addition, inter-laboratory comparison is also very important you know, to ensure the data quality. So uh, we, from time to time, we do the intercomparison with the, uh, uh, the Nobel Prize winner, Laboratory, Cheryl Rowland and uh, Tom Blake group in the chemistry department of UC Irvine. Okay, so uh, this actually, we show uh, some parallel experiments between these two labs. So for some species, as you can see, you know, the, uh, the slope uh, close to, was close to one and then R square uh, was above, you know, uh, 0.9. So indicating, you know, the system is reliable. Another issue is because we use canister to collect a sample. Okay, so therefore the canister is also very important. The quality of canister is also very important. All right, so uh, here actually I show, we bought, you know, two different brands of canisters, you know, for one from UC Irvine, they made, you know, canister by themselves, and also uh, two others from, you know, commercial company. So uh, we did the, uh, uh, the comparison, you know, we inject a standard into the canister, and then we immediately analyze those uh, standards, you know, on the first day, and then we lift the canister there. So on the sixth day, ninth day, and 15th day to analyze the chemical compounds inside the, uh, the, can the same canister again. And so we can see actually, you know, after, you know, 15 days, the UC Irvine's, so the, the Y axis actually is very, uh, relative difference, you know, uh, between the difference between six days to uh, uh, and the first days and nine days and first days, 15 days and uh, the first days. And then we can see, you know, the relative difference is quite small for using the Irvine's canister. However, for the communist, uh, the canister, you, we can see, you know, the difference. Uh, actually, a lot of uh, species actually was above over 200 percent okay so uh so we can see you know uh these canisters may not be uh, suitable uh to leave the sample in your laboratory for more than you know uh six days or nine days or 15 days okay however the ucr wise one can so if you because sample size was so large, you cannot analyze them, you know, within one day. So it will take some time. So that means actually the air sample will stay in the canister for several, for certain period of time, right? And then the quality of the canister is so important.
So when you conduct a similar sampling campaign, you should pay attention to this. Okay, so after we collect sample, we certainly will report, you know, the data, right? What's the level of the air pollutant due to different land use, right? And uh, what's the chemical compound composition right, in the air? So in addition to the report of the data directly, we also use some models, try to further you know, understand those chemicals. So uh, we use the, uh, the uh, sort of reset model, uh, we call it a positive matrix factorization, PMF model, to try to understand the source of those VOCs, where are they, where are they come from, right? Which source, which sources contribute to the ambient VOCs? So we can use this, this model to get the answer. We also develop our own photochemical box model uh, coupled with master chemical mechanism. So this box model actually can simulate very complicated chemical reactions within a well mixed boundary layer, air puzzle. Okay, so they are different from those emission based model. So this model actually use observation data as input. Okay, and also this model consider very detailed chemical uh, mechanism. So which actually describe the degradation of more than 140 VOC species and covering, you know, 17,000 reactions in the chop sphere, all right? So the input, as you can see, so when we input the observation data, so we will model the photochemical production process, decomposition process, dry deposition, and uh, a lot, uh, sorry, uh, we actually, in the model, we also consider, you know, this uh, decomposition process, dry deposition, a loft exchange, and then eventually we will understand the photochemical uh, production, destruction process, right? From the output of this model. Okay, so let's uh, move to the measurement data after we did the sampling campaign. So this sampling campaign certainly involve a lot of uh, uh, people, you know, because uh, we seen, you know, uh, 10 cities and 10 sites within the uh, PRD region. So you can imagine how, how much uh, manpower we need to finish this uh, job. Okay, so, uh, so the data is, uh, uh, is precise, I would say. So in terms of TVOC in China, uh, in these 10 cities, we found actually uh, the general characteristics. So North part of China usually has higher uh, TVOC concentration than South, China, South part of China. The Lanzhou, Lanzhou actually, so this city uh, actually had the highest TVOC concentration, right? It, uh, and then uh, Jinan, Beijing, and the Xiazhang also had a quite high level of VOC, while Shanghai uh, had lower, you know, uh, the lowest, you know, TVOC level. So in terms of the composition of VOC, we see actually alkanes and carbonyl, carbonyls that's the OVOC, actually contribute more than a half of TVOC in all the cities, okay? And then, uh, so when we look at different indi uh, individual cities, we found actually alkanes contribute the most in the following six, uh, six cities, while the OVOCs made the larger contribution in Beijing, Guiyang, China, and Guangzhou. Okay, so this actually we can see, you know, due to different land use, and then we can see the chemical composition was different in different city. And in terms of the TVOC level in PRD region, uh, we found actually in central area of this region, including Guangzhou, Dongguan, and Shenzhen, actually had the higher uh, TVOC level than other area. So the highest level we found actually uh, was Xinjiang. And then Dongguan, urban Guangzhou had a higher, you know, uh, TVOC level 
and uh, in suburban area. So of Guangzhou, we see the lowest PVOC, uh, uh, VOC level, which actually, as you can see, so that's because the different land use, right? rural area should have, should have lower uh, VOC level. And in terms of the uh, VOC groups, again, you know, similar to other cities, OKs and OVOCs are the major contributor. And uh, so uh, most of cities in PRD region, you know, had the, uh, the higher contribution from Oken, while Guangzhou had the, uh, sorry, Guangzhou uh, was the, uh, had the highest contribution from OVOC. Okay, Guangzhou is different from other cities. And uh, so we also rank, you know, the VOC species, top five uh, hydrocarbons and top three uh, OVOCs in China. And then we found that actually uh, the carbon two and three hydrocarbons dominate in the cities in China. And the carbon four hydrocarbon uh, was, uh, was higher in North and Central China than South part of China. Okay. And uh, carbon five actually hydrocarbons was higher in Southwestern China. We found the Torian was higher in Chengdu and Shanghai, these two cities, not other cities, okay. And also the chloro methane in Guiyang and Guangzhou uh, was higher. In terms of OVOCs, acetone actually uh, was abundant in uh, more than five cities. In many cities, we found a higher acetone level Beijing actually had a higher formaldehyde and acetaldehyde uh, level. And these are OVOCs, which actually uh, are more reactive than other VOCs, meaning they could contribute more to ozone pollution. Okay, and Jinan, Wuhan also had a higher formaldehyde. So how about the situation in PRD region? So pretty similar, uh, carbon two and three hydrocarbon dominate in the whole PRD region. While the toluene was mainly found in Eastern part of PRD region. So this area, Dongguan, uh, Guizhou and Shenzhen. Isopene, so that's the biogenic emission emitted from vegetation trees. So, was higher in suburban Guangzhou, which is not surprised, right? And the uh, dichromethane was mainly found in urban Guangzhou. Okay, in terms of VOC, uh, OVOC, uh, the acetone was higher uh, in Dongguan, Guangzhou, and Fosan, and for motor high uh, was higher in Guizhou, Zhaoqin, and uh, Southern. PRD region. Okay, so uh, we also try to understand where uh, these VOC species come from. So therefore we did the source apportionment right, using the reset model, PMF model. So in general, uh, the cities in China, uh, in all the cities in China, we can find these sources, okay, diesel vehicle emission. Right, gasoline vehicle emission, LPG exhaust, and also solar usage, industry process, biogenic emission. So these are the six common sources uh, which can be found in cities in China, including PRD region. Okay, based on the tracer of each source. So because we measure those tracers, right? So. How about this con the contribution of these sources to VOC in China? So actually the diesel, gasoline, LPG exhaust, we can counter them as vehicle exhaust, right? So when we add them together, we found actually, you know, the vehicle exhaust contribute the most to VOC in China cities. This followed by the solar usage as a second contributor. 
However, when we compare, you know, the level, uh, the source contributions in different part of the China, we see we found actually the northern China, including Zhejiang, Jinan, Zhengzhou, and Lanzhou, had a higher vehicle emission than south part of China. While in south southern cities, more southern usage source contribution was found, right, than the north part of China. And uh, in, ten, in the PRD region, so we found actually, you know, a pretty similar, as I said, you know, vehicle exhaust that contribute the most, followed by the solvent usage, usage and then biogenic emission in the process. So the southwestern part, Jiangmen, Zhuhai, Foshan, this part of uh, area, we found a higher diesel vehicle emission than gasoline and LPG exhaust. And Guangzhou actually had more LPG fuel vehicle emission. While in eastern part of this uh, region, we found the more intensive solar usage. Okay, so after we know the source contribution to the VOCs, we still want to know the VOC, are uh, these VOCs still stay in the air, staying in the air, you know, Stably, quietly, no, they actually, they will react with nitrogen oxides emitted from other combustion sources, okay, under the sunlight to generate ozone. So therefore it is important how these VOC species contribute to the ozone uh, in the atmosphere. So we use uh, the, the model, the box model, we developed by ourselves uh, to, you know, to validate this model first, right? Otherwise, you won't trust the, the simulation results. So, uh, so we did the uh, simulation uh, of ozone and compare with observation, observation of ozone. So you can see, you know, uh, in general, the model uh, can catch the variation of observed ozone in the five max cities. So now we focus on the five max cities because we measure other air pollutants, right? Uh, so therefore we can see the IOA, uh, the index of, uh, of agreement uh, can reach, you know, uh, 0.78. So which actually uh, was within the range of 0.66 to 0.89 in previous studies. So in other words, we trusted this model, so we can use the model to simulate the photochemical reaction process. So let's first look at the ozone production and destruction pathways. So uh, we can see in these five major cities, the ozone production pathway well, this two, HO2 reactor with NO, R2 react with NO to generate ozone. Okay, so uh, for the second pathway, so we can see a little bit difference between the cities. So Chengdu and Wuhan, Shanghai made 35 to 40%, right? A little bit less than Beijing and Lanzhou. So this was because Beijing and Lanzhou had a higher local VOC levels, which actually will generate higher R2 concentration. So therefore, this second production pathway made a, a little bit higher contribution than the other three cities. So the ozone, not just uh, can be generated. At the same time, they can also be destructive. So uh, what's the way? So since in the air, we also, uh, the sources also emit NO2, O king, and even water, right, what vapor. So therefore, if the ozone or OH radical was consumed by these compounds in the air, and then the ozone actually will destruct it. So we see the OH reactor with NO2 dominate the destruction pathway. However, for the second 
uh, destruction pathway in Beijing and Nanjing was ozone uh, reactor with Oking, while in other cities, the ozone for Tholosis was the second main destruction pathway. All right. So the reason for the difference, again, because Beijing and Lanzhou had a higher Oking's level than the other three cities. So in comparison, we see actually the net ozone production rate that equals the production uh, rate minus the destruction rate, we call net ozone production rate. So we see the highest level of ozone production rate in Lanzhou. So that is 8.9 PVB per year, right? And followed by Beijing. The lowest one was in Shanghai, all right? And how about this cycling of OH radical? As we know, OH actually is the initiator to trigger the photochemical ozone uh, formation. So uh, the, o the OH cycling is so important, right? So, uh, and then we use the model, we found actually the main formation pathway of OH was HO2 react with NO, right? More than 80% uh, was dominated by this pathway and how the ozone will be lost. The VOC can consume OH, CO in the air can consume OH, NO2 in the air can consume OH, okay? So, uh, and then we can see the OH cycling rate in Lanzhou, Beijing, and Wuhan was higher than Chengdu and Shanghai. Okay, the recycling rate was higher. And then the OH concentration we can see uh, in these three cities was also uh, higher, and especially the RX concentration was higher, much higher than the Chengdu and Shanghai, indicating what? The atmospheric oxidative capacity, we call AOC, was stronger in northern central China in summer. Okay, so this actually gives us message about the cycling of OH radical. If you look at the, the figure, you can see, you know, the peak was higher in Nanzhou, Beijing, and Wuhan, right? The peak in Chengdu and Shanghai was smaller. All right, so, uh, and also use that model, we can get the integrated uh, relative incremental reactivity, we call IR value. So we did two scenarios. One is the, uh, during the whole sampling period, we calculate the uh, IR value using the model. And then we found actually for Beijing, Shanghai, Wuhan, Chengdu, Okay, we see the, these are the VOC. Okay, I have a, I, I have values for VOCs. Okay, and for NOx, the black color, for CO, yellow color, green color, BVOC. So we see, you know, except, uh, you know, in some cities, the NOx level, uh, NOx R, R value was negative, all the other values was positive, okay and especially for VOCs, anthropogenic VOCs. So this means actually, we, if we cut the VOC, let, uh, uh, reduce the VOC level, the ozone formation will be reduced, okay? So therefore, Beijing, Shanghai, Wuhan, Chengdu, we call it as VOC limited, okay? And then uh, Shang, uh, uh, for, for this city, Shanghai, and Chengdu, Wuhan, Beijing. So you see, right? If we cut the NOx, it actually will increase the ozone level. So this we call it as VOC limited. And then uh, for Lanzhou, it's a little bit different. It's called limited by VOC and NOx because VOC and NOx are values are positive, both positive. But the R value of VOC was much higher than NOx. So therefore we see it's more sensitive to VOC. In other words, it may be more effective if you cut VOC 
rather than NOx. Okay. And also we did the, another scenario. We just calculate the IR values, uh, simulate IR values uh, when the ozone concentration was very higher, higher than 100, uh, 100 ppbv. And then we found actually Shanghai and Beijing on those high ozone days is still VOC limited, Shanghai and Chengdu. Sorry, okay. And then Beijing, Wuhan actually changed from VOC limited to core limited by both VOC and NOx, okay, and NOx. While Lanzhou also uh, switched from more sensitive to VOC uh, to more sensitive to NOx, okay. NOx IR value become larger. So in terms of the species in different cities, uh, we see high IR values of formaldehyde, acetonehyde, and xylings in four cities, except uh, you know, the acetonehyde, uh, uh, lower acetonehyde level in Lanzhou. And Poping was higher in Beijing and Lanzhou, right? And try missing benzene and one building, uh, we found that, well, the key VOC species in Shanghai, okay, in Shanghai, this here. Okay, and then uh, based on the model, we can also plot the ECMA curve, okay, in for these cities. So uh, when we plot the ECMA curve due to time limit, I won't uh, uh, explain this, uh, uh, the curve in detail, but when we plot this uh, ECMA curve, we see actually Chengdu and Shanghai control uh, was VOC limited. In other words, controlling VOC, uh, we can reduce the ozone formation. While if we reduce the NOx, and that we actually will increase uh, the ozone level. So for Beijing and Wuhan, again, so we see it actually uh, core limited by VOC and NOx, while Lanzhou was limited by uh, NOx. So different city, we see, you know, different city uh, had different ozone formation mechanism. In other words, we need to pay more attention when local government make their own control policies. All right. So we also did try to understand how the source contribute to ozone production. Okay. So rather than species contribute to ozone production. So we found actually for these five cities, the diesel exhaust industry emission IR values or the change of ozone production rate was negative. So in other words, although diesel vehicle exhaust was the highest emission source. And then usually you will say, oh, if I cut this highest, the largest emission source, I should be able to reduce the VOC emission and then I should reduce the ozone uh, production. So that was not correct. When we see the change of ozone production was negative, that means actually when we cut the diesel exhaust the industry emission, uh, industry emission source, we actually, we will increase the ozone concentration. That's because actually when we cut, cut this, this source, we are not only cut the VOC, but also the NOx, okay? So the NOx, we see in the VOC limited regime, regime so the NOx actually can titrate some ozone. When we cut those uh, NOx, and then the titration, NO titration effect uh, was weakened. So causing higher level of VOC. Uh, of ozone. However, for Lanzhou, so we see, you know, uh, the vehicle exhaust. So all the sources actually made a positive contribution. That means actually you can cut all the sources, whatever, you know, whichever sources you cut, you can reduce uh, ozone formation. So uh, for individual city, we can see, you know, the, for Chengdu, we see the highest uh, positive value for, uh, for solvent use. So that means actually probably in Chengdu, if they can reduce the solvent use usage 
that will be most uh, effective in reducing the you know, ozone level and in Beijing gasoline exhaust and LBG in Wuhan. We control these sources that will reduce the ozone level effectively. Okay, come to the conclusion. So in Chen cities, we conduct a sampling campaign in 10 typical cities in China. So we found TVOC level was higher in Northern China uh, and the, the highest level of VOC was found in Nanzhou and Aoking and VOVOCs was the major contributor to TVOCs. Okay, and, uh, and also more carbon-4 hydrocarbon was found in Northern Central China while carbon-5 hydrocarbons were mainly existing in Southern Western China. And uh, so Northern city had higher vehicle emission while Southern city had a higher solvent usage. Okay, so uh, in terms of ozone photochemistry, we found actually Lanzhou and Beijing had the higher ozone production rate. Okay, so the more contributor of pathway of R2 reactor with NO was found in Lanzhou and Beijing. And strong air uh, atmospheric oxidative capacity was found in Northern and Central China in summer. So Chengdu and Shanghai actually ozone formation in Chengdu and Shanghai was VOC limited, while in Beijing and Wuhan was co-limited by VOC and NOx. In Lanzhou, NOx, uh, the ozone formation was NOx limited. So in terms of source contribution to ozone production, so we consider, you know, in Chengdu, if we cut the solvent usage in Beijing, gasoline uh, exhaust uh, was cut, then actually ozone level could be reduced. Uh, so this actually, this project was actually funded by the Minister of Science and Technology of China. Uh, we call National Key and D Program of China. Uh, thank you very much. Uh,